Coming at you straight from a tree fort, a mile outside Camp Apocalypse, this is Rage Across the Internet, the World of the Apocalypse podcast. And yep, we're still here, everybody. I'm your host, Porter. To my left, producer Joey. Hey, guys. And coming at us uh, from his little bunker with a uh, can and a string, we've got our buddy Danny. Daniel Tyson, how you doing? Hey, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can, and so can they. Good. That's the hope, right? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta pull this string a little tighter to make sure. What is that, Campbell's tomato or is that a uh, chicken noodle? Chicken noodle. Gross. So. <laughs> you brought you bought a case before the apocalypse, huh? No, oh, absolutely. Progressor all the way, you know, not sponsored. So listen, um, here we are. What is this? Episode six. Episode six, yes. Episode six, and obviously, since we started recording, um, things have changed out there. So, um, again, we've got, we've got Danny coming at us remote, and um, our original rundown for our episode list was kind of... It got flip-flopped a little. Kind of thrown directly in the trash. <laughs> but, flip-flopped is an understatement. But um, we're still here, we're still putting them together, uh, so bear with the, the transition, but hopefully we're still going to bring you some quality content and, you know, put some smiles on your faces. And hey, you know, if you're not essential, you've got time to listen to the podcast. So here you're we go. Es- you're essential to us. <laughs> That's true. Um, and actually, oh, the. <laughs> That's pretty sweet of you. <laughs> oh no. We're going to get the wrong idea. Uh, but speaking about that, um, I do want to take a second to, uh, to, to thank you guys. We, we've gotten some. There's been some really kind words said about what we're doing here. You know, there are people. Uh, we, should, we, we can't thank you enough, you know. We, we love doing this, we love talking about it, and it's so great to know that there are people there who, who are hearing this, who appreciate, who get what we're doing. I, we're just, we're very thankful. We are. We are extremely thankful, and, you know, stick with us. Yeah. It's only going to get better. It absolutely is. And, you know, we even got some, uh, we, we've even got some people who aren't super familiar with, uh, with Werewolf or even with role-playing. And uh, because of that, we were going to do a new segment later on at the end of the episode, a little couple minutes for, for the person who doesn't know anything to give them a little, little more knowledge so they can get on the same page as the rest of us. And we've got a couple questions from someone who, again, isn't... Isn't familiar with role-playing at all, but listens to the podcast to help us out. So Joey, you want to take that away? Give that to the table? Sure. Okay, the first question that we're all going to answer in turn... Um, why don't you get bored or tired of playing the game for a long period of time? Like, years. So, um, this is more you and I, but oh, Danny... No, I, I think it's Danny, too. Yeah. Um, so... Well, if you're talking years, well, that's hard for me to answer. But, like, I'm, I can't get bored if it's just during a day. Even though our stories and our games can last, what, close to 10 to 12 hours at times? If there's enough going on in our story, I'm never bored. Well, I and might I get tired, but I think you hit the nail on the head. There's a lot going on. There's moving pieces. There's mysteries to be solved. There's twists and turns, and I think the the amount of moving parts and and plot issues and interpersonal conflicts and resolutions keep it all moving. I take notes at game day. It's ridiculous. I bring a journal with me. I start writing stuff down. Okay, scribbling with your so big crayon doesn't count. We've told you that before. <gasps> oh. Well, Army started, man. <laughs> Ow. Couldn't have waited. <laughs> that, that Not even <laughs> subtle either. God damn. <laughs> that was this poor guy. <laughs> and that's come out of me. <laughs> I'll give him some burn cream. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go to the hospital, sir. Burn cream. Um, it, it, but I think you know the answer. You guys, um, you guys hit it pretty well. I mean, I'm sure there are games out there, uh, storytellers, that it does get boring. Yeah. St- you know, statistically, that's got to be true. I mean, I know people have said that that I've gotten tired of the game because it's the same old thing. But at least, at least in our group, I try to make sure it's never the same thing. I mean, I could, I could come back at you and go, "Well, do you ever get bored of the planet?" Because that's kind of what I try to do. I try to make it like the real world, yeah. or a real world at least. So there's always something going on, something new, something different, a new challenge, a new mystery, or whatever. So no. There's there's so much to do in the game. No, I've, I've never... I've gotten burnt out every now and then, but that's about 
writing the scripts and, and, and we I, got bored. I think that if we get bored, we just go and, you know, our characters do something else. I think that just keeps the boredom from happening. I yeah. Think. Yeah. It, and that's probably the most difficult, I would imagine, being from storytelling. You know, how do you go with the storytell and try and keep the story going when your players might have different decisions than you're assuming they would? Well, I think that's a good thing to bring up in a couple minutes. Once, uh, But, Joe, you got another question. I do. I do. So, again, listener question. Um... Does this game help you in real life? And I'm going to add an how or why to that. So, Danny, why don't you take it away? <laughs> I figured I'll leave me first. Oh, uh, man, public speaking, which apparently is still not, you know, conspiracy theory Dan's best quality. <laughs> Talking about himself in third person, and also he's at home alone. He's not in public. <laughs> What is this man talking about? Since <laughs> when did we become public? Yeah, we're, when there's more than four people, it's now a public space. So the three of us today. <laughs> today. I'm talking about game day. Uh, okay, okay, Dan. Um, so we're going to have to review numbers. <laughs> Stay tuned for next episode. Oh, man. Danny learns what comes after six. <laughs> you throw math at me now, too? <laughs> But public speaking, that's, uh... <laughs> yeah, public speaking. <laughs> uh, not... What's the other one? More specifically, um... Keeping track word? of your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> no, um... She's on fire today. <laughs> ah, man, you hurt my feelings and I'm losing train of thought. <laughs> uh, investigation. There we go. Okay. Fair You know, shit happens in game. I start investigating why. Yes. So, Porter, what do you got? How does this help you in real life? Well, and I don't want to make it, and I know what the question is, I don't want to make it just like all about me. I'm going to talk in general because that's easier, huh? Um, but, you know, Danny brings up a great point. People public speaking, um, you know, it's a great socialization tool for people who are maybe not great. Um, it, you know, uh, it, it can translate, um, like as a storyteller, you know, if someone wants to be a writer, being a storyteller is a great way to begin that process. <laughs> You know, um, you learn a lot about characterization. You know, if somebody wants to, uh, is interested in the theater, this is, um, and I'll say it, arguably harder than that. Hmm. You know. Um, it's improvisation. It is. It's all improv. You know, there's a script, but you guys as the players don't get to see it. <laughs> You're in character yeah. all the time. You don't have lines written out. You have to come up with that. Yeah, so there's the improv element. It, it's, it's good practice for stuff like that. You know, uh, and again, the socialization aspect, you know, uh, self-expression. No, I think there's a lot of benefits to it. I mean, I think it helped me learn how to assert myself and, you know, to take charge, to lead people. Cause, That's an excellent point. You know, you, you get to be pack alpha and, and you got to do it. And you got to learn how to make the tough choices. And, you know, sometimes, even though it's only in a story, sometimes you've got to weigh options and pick the greater good. Yeah, well said. Well said. Yeah, that's a solid point. So we, uh, those are the questions. So thank you. Thank you for coming to, the, to us with those. Thank you for writing in. And hey, to the rest of you, write in. <laughs> yeah, if you got questions, we'll read them on the air and we'll try to answer them. Yeah, you know, uh, good, bad, indifferent, whatever you got, we'll, we'll handle it. Okay, so on to the actual part of the episode. Yes, our actual topic today. Yes. Uh, storytelling, the storytelling in you. <laughs> I can't talk. Storytelling, the storytelling in you. That's official. <laughs> I, I, I will Sorry. fix that in post. No, I want to see that title, Storytelling, the Storyteller in You. <laughs> That's the episode name, and if I don't see it, I'm on strike. The storyteller in you. If the host goes on strike, I think the rest of us is kind of collapse. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. I don't. I'd almost pay to hear one of you guys do an impression of me for a whole show. That'd be gold. I mean, I could do one, just not for a whole show. It would be comedy gold. I think it would be. That that might be a thing for a show. We're gonna keep that in the back pocket. But yeah, we're gonna do a we're doing a storytelling centric episode today. Um, I've seen a lot. 
on the uh, the Werewolf Facebook group. A lot of people lately have been talking about they're flexing those old storyteller muscles, or they're a new storyteller, you know, trying games for the first time. People needing help with ideas, and so I thought, you know, we're gonna be doing these as we go, but this is as good a time as any, mm -hmm. since our rundown is just on fire as we speak. So <laughs> everything's on fire. The bike is on fire. That everything. We're all doomed. So. Is the actual apocalypse? No, sir. It is not. We're not there by a mile yet. But hey. Wait, what? It's not. No. No, it's werewolf well, the apocalypse. This is but a game, I haven't sir. left the house, so I can't tell otherwise. I, I, I don't know how to respond to that. That's what the news tells me. Okay, so. <laughs> Holy shit. It, it's on the news, so it has to be true, I guess? Yes. Is that the new saying? Oh, so anyway, we have, um, <laughs> we have mentioned them, I think, once or twice since we started this little podcast, but there actually is a fifth member to our Motley crew. Yes. Uh, our dear friend Tom, whose schedule is just all sorts of crazy, so he hasn't been able to be here. Um, and due to the technical limitations of the canon string, he wasn't able to be here today. Yeah, you really can't, you know, branch off more than one string here. No, he, he just he gets rubbery, and I mean, it's already tinny as hell, but he couldn't be here today for this one. Um, we're, we're hoping to get him for the next recording. We're hoping. You'll 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 hear from him. You'll hear from Tom before too long. But yeah. We got to we've got to sanitize the can and the string. Do we do? But he um he wanted to be a part of this episode. So, you know, we reached out to him and he wrote down some questions that he specifically he points he wanted me to talk about. So, he is part of this episode even in absentia. Yes. Because his words are here. We have them and we miss him. I even put in the misspellings and the awkward <laughs> syntax. So it's... <laughs> so should I start by reading one of Tom's first questions? Yeah, let's, let's, let's hit a Tom question. Okay, so Tom asks, What do you do to integrate the backgrounds of your players into your overall campaign? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> no. Wow, all right, next question. No, Sorry, Tom. <laughs> No, uh, it, it really depends. It, like this isn't a great this isn't a great answer. In, in, in so far as this isn't the way I, I should be doing it, but I'm going to okay. be real about it. It it really depends on um, what those backgrounds are. It depends on how experienced the player is, um, how much how much is peppered in. Okay. Um, you know, in a case like uh, like Danny or Tom, for example, who made first time characters, you know, Danny, you gave me something to work with. I um, mean, in terms yeah. of background, I, I didn't like it. Yeah, it wasn't great. So, I just haven't gone back to it. And I will at some point. But it didn't, like, really grab me and go, ooh, I'm, I'm following up on this immediately. And okay. Tom, I didn't see anything there to work with, but, and, and that sounds like I'm kind of taking a shit on some people. No, here. but they were first-time <laughs> players. Half so. a shit on me, half a shit on Tom. And, and like, that's the point, though, is, is, is first-time players... Um, you guys didn't leave me any hooks, per se. So, like, with Tom's, I kind of made my own. You know, he didn't address... The same with, with you, Danny. You didn't address the, the Yaru part of your background. And that gave me room to play with it and make it. You know? Um, I mean, indirect opposition. There's the write-up that I did that we've had everybody read. Yes. And, Danny, you've read it. Did you think there were story hooks and places Sorry. that he could have gathered ideas from? Uh, you know, tons. Whereas mine probably only had the you know, select few. And even then, like he just said, he could only use so many of them. Right. So that's the difference in experience. Yes. By far. You know, a brand new player compared to someone who's already been playing for so long. But see, even then, to jump in on that... I didn't use any of those. No, you didn't. And, and some of it is because, well, that's not where the story is going, and maybe it, that character wasn't designed for the long term, but let's assume that that player, that character had run. Would I eventually get to that stuff? Probably. But it wasn't anything that was immediate enough. Or you look at look at Danny's, um, you know, his dealt a lot with, uh, like, the girl who got away kind of thing in his, you know, his tender teenage years. But then you look at that in the context of the nation and how the character has grown. Right. It means nothing. 
yeah, there's nothing there for Hunter now. Right. And that can be a story. The development of Hunter where he looks back and realizes this thing that was so important to him is fucking meaningless now. There's something there. But you see how I couldn't have run that story a year ago. Right. It would have and, been nothing. And I think the reason for that is because when I wrote that, it, I didn't have any context of what the story was going to be. So this was just, okay, i got to come up with something. No, and you did, what sounds good? You did a fine job. That's not what we're talking about here. Don't misconstrue. It's just that I guess the, the worthier part, if I were to be more succinct, oh my God, what would what would we do if I were more succinct? Oh no. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, we wouldn't have a podcast. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, <laughs> wordy motherfucker. Uh, you know, sometimes that stuff just needs time to incubate is I guess the, the best way to put that. You know, um, how varies wildly depending on the situation, but I think largely that stuff needs time to incubate. We didn't touch down on Danny's father to the third fucking chronicle. I teased it, but I had no intention of uh, of moving that curtain, you know, until it was experienced enough to make a difference. Okay. Right. And that tease was there on several occasions, and I think that helped sink the hooks in. There you go. So do we want to do... Let's just run through Tom's and then we'll... Okay. Tom's second question. What elements do you use... And in what way do you link them to the main story? Well, I mean, that's, and that's kind of the follow-up there. And, um, you know, just a quick reiteration. Quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, you know, like, much like the, the, we brought up with, uh, with Danny's character, Hunter, and, and the whole situation with his father, you know, I, I brought in the lead, the, the tease of, hey, there's this guy out there and he's part of the nation. But then we waited until, you know, I waited until... Danny and moreover the character had more experience what was more well-rounded I let that character grow and breathe before well, I hit him in the head with a hammer Okay, so you mentioned oh, oh, or chopped his arm off depending on which way you look at it Okay, you mentioned oh. the third chronicle So for those people out there who don't know a what a chronicle is What is it and how many stories are in it? Well a chronicle is a uh, I guess the best way I would Describe that to people who don't know is a chronicle is like a season of television. Okay. I mean that would be the best way to equate it. Mm-hmm. You know, and much like television, some up some some seasons have six episodes. They're a mid-season guy. You know, some get a thirteen, some get the full twenty. You know, when uh when I was younger, uh, in my early years, I would uh, I would do, you know, twenty one up uh, twenty one different stories in a chronicle, and that was just my hard line because I wanted to keep it. Kind of in that kind of much like a television show, you know. Okay. You know, 21, 22 episodes, and that's the way it's going to be. And then, you know, as I got older, more experienced with storytelling, I, I realized that a lot of that, the problem with that is a lot of that becomes filler. Mm-hmm. So now a chronicle is exactly as long as I need it to get what I want to done. Do you okay. need to accomplish what I'm setting out to? Okay, so there's no magic number. There's no magic no... number. It's what's in your heart. Okay, good. All the once in a while, those fillers don't hurt. You know, monster of the week kind of thing. <coughs> no, they definitely. Once def- in a while, it's not a bad deal. No, 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 no. The monster of the week they definitely don't hurt, and you're right. Sometimes they can play a, a very important uh, a part of what's going on. But there's the difference of of doing something just for the sake of doing it. Right. And you know, if you're a group that games every week, you can afford to do a lot more than you can if you're a group that gets together every month. That'd be nice. Right. Once a week. Well, you say that, but I'd have to write for it. <laughs> that leads to burnout. Trust me. I'm just saying it would be nice. It would be nice to have the free time to be able to meet. Yeah. But but again, the point there is, you know, that there's definitely a time and a place for Monster of the Week, but there comes a point where if you're saying, I'm doing 20, you know, 26, 26 stories in this chronicle, because it's 26 because I say so, now you're looking to fill time because your stories, you know, what, what you're trying to say, you've already said it. You've accomplished what you're looking for. And now you're going out of your way to waste everyone's time. Okay, next question. Based on the levels of your player, how do you scale and decide what monsters slash spirits slash situations to present to them? Scaling's a motherfucker. <laughs> um, in terms of experience of the players, I don't let that factor in at all. Okay. You know, uh, experience of the characters, that's a different thing because you're not setting out to kill the players. Right. You know, if, if that happens as a consequence, well, it's, it's, it's part of the thing. It's, it's something that could happen. 
but it's never something that should be the goal. So you want to make an appropriate challenge most of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I don't think I have ever thrown you guys into a situation where you couldn't handle what was in front of you, but that will happen. Uh, it might have happened once or twice, but I think, you know, going back to Golden Rule, you scaled it mid-game. That's, that's a different thing, and I was about to bring that up. I, I have a problem with spirits. I have a problem scaling spirit power. And yeah, there have been a few occasions where I've, I've made this Bane, you know, I've created this enemy, and I've statted him up, and I'm very happy with how he looks, the numbers feel right, they're supposed to be okay, and I sit down and we roll the dice, and it killed you twice over in one roll, and I went, this was supposed to be a moderate threat. Oh, there are two no. more of those around the corner. And then, you know, you immediately have to do some fumbly kind of math to try to go, no, no, this isn't what I wanted. You know, bad touch. We can't have this. <laughs> Let's fix it. <laughs> okay, so, like, you know, if we're in starting a combat and you realize that you have made a, a bad, bad mistake. Huge mistake, yes. You fix it on the fly. I fix it on the fly. I, I will, um, usually, and I mean, I don't have a hard, fast rule on this either. But I'll cut its damage in half immediately. Okay. You know, depending on. Okay. And go, okay, well, we're going to half these stats now and see what happens. We're going to half the rolls. You know, maybe I like its HP where it is, but we'll, we'll get the rest of it, you know. And we'll see how that works in the next combat, the next turn. Gotcha. And okay. I will tweak as we go until it's where I need it to be because somebody screwed up when he made the damn character. And, and I think <laughs> the um, saying, never let them see you sweat. Mm hmm. It is really how you handle that because we don't know. I, I try to, but sometimes it's so bad that I just you admit it right away. Yeah, I do sometimes. Like, look, everyone knows the emperor doesn't have any clothes on. Just, just call attention <laughs> to it. Let's just make a joke of it. But for people who are are listening to this and and trying to get ideas of what to do, yeah, it's if you got to scale something on the fly, that's totally fine. And, and in that case, I think you're right, Joey. Just don't don't let them see. Your, they can't see your maps. You're behind a screen. Or you should be. Yeah. Or, or you're on a headset or on the... But whatever. They, they can't see your stuff. So that's, I'm, that's I'm not saying, hey, everybody cheat. But I'm saying do what's appropriate to keep the story going, to keep everyone having a good time. If you screwed a thing up because you misstatted something, you are totally... Feel, feel free. Feel you have done nothing wrong to fix it on the fly. You know? There's no shame in going, I don't want to ruin my game because I got some numbers wrong. Okay. Going back to Golden Rule. Exactly. So the next question. Where do you draw motivation from to write stories with mystery and in investigative features to keep your players drawn in for a story that will last for over ten meetings? I feel like um like you got the D pads for that question, huh? That that that's <laughs> Well done, Tom. Damn, thanks, Tom. Um, I know, that, that's an insightful and rich <laughs> question. <laughs> but I, I, I do love the core question, the part that's not praise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, thank you. <clears throat> but, you know, Inspirato, as Jack Black once dubbed it, can come from anywhere. And, and that seems like uh, an obvious thing. But, you know, it, it's the, the thing you saw on TV. And when you see the thing on TV, you don't mimic the thing you see on TV. You know, or, or it's the song you hear. Uh, I built a chronicle around the song In the Valley by Sean James. Um, those of you who are, are uh, video gamers out there, you might know it was, it was the song that played in the trailer for The Last of Us 2. And I heard this trailer, and I'm like, what is this fucking song? And, and just hearing it. And um, was it Ashley Williams, I believe, is the voice actor? Uh, I, I the, don't know what band, but it sounds familiar. I, I think that's correct. Sorry, it's not. Oops. But, you know, I'm hearing her sing this song, and I'm just this acoustic, and I'm listening to it. And, and then I had this idea for this whole fucking chronicle, this concept of, you know, nobody's hands are clean. I, I, I'm in a fortunate position where I have this group of young players, inexperienced players, and experienced Garu. And I can, I can base a whole chronicle around the idea that you are not the hero. You are. But even though you're not, that doesn't make you a good person. That doesn't make you innocent. That doesn't make you just. And just the song, just, you know, two minutes, 30 seconds, and not even, because it wasn't the whole damn song. So, <laughs> that was enough, you know? No, I remember the song, and, like, yeah, the, that chronicle is probably one of my favorite 
we'll just call it, you know, the whole chronicle, the whole story. It's probably one of my favorites I've ever since I've even started this. Oh, thank you. It, it was, um, I think it was my finest work, honestly. Okay. Um, I was I was very proud of it until Tom got a hold of it. Story eight. <laughs> uh, well, he shit on the end. We're not. We'll we're save not that for yeah, we're time. not. We're not going to talk about how he he made a decision I didn't see coming and derailed my entire ending. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Which I think we should kind of pivot into that question I had. Is all right, you, Danny. What do you got? How do you plan for certain things when your players could possibly change decisions? Well. It, in a good question because ideally you know and i know maybe this is less true these days because we're in the future now you know like we're talking to danny through a little box that beams through space and you know so people play like they play through discord and they you know they play online you know there there are digital games it's a regular thing now so maybe it's less you know your players but at least at least back in my day Oh, God. Know, he right? walked to school 10 miles uphill both ways. We've heard it all before. Fight Nexus crawlers with one arm because the other one was saving the world from the Kaiser. It's enough. <laughs> um, but, you know, ideally, you know your players. And in, I think you know your players well. So there's a level of, I don't want to say predictability, but predictability. I know how Danny thinks. So I wouldn't admit that too loudly. That, People are going to be concerned. Well, how about you know how Danny's character Hunter thinks? No, I know how Danny thinks, and that informs how Hunter <laughs> thinks. <laughs> okay, fair. You know, it's not the same thing. It's not a one for one, but you know, I, I know that there there are certain conclusions that might be jumped to, or there are certain points that might just go over someone's head. And I don't mean specifically with you. I mean with anyone in the group. Mm -hmm. You know, knowing your players is very important because it, it makes it easier. I, I had a group, What you know, this is way back in the day, where we had an Aharon Glass Walker who just was terrible. Like, the character was terrible. He was just a shitty guy, and he was a loudmouth, and he didn't have any filter, and he didn't give a shit. Okay. And, and so these, these guys are like, you know, they're rank two and a half, they're rank three, and the elders are like, hey, we need you to do this mission, and he's like, fuck you, that's beneath us. Go get a cub to do that shit. Which, of course, goes over very well with the elders. I but, promise. <laughs> But see, I know that. I know that's how he's going to react. So, now not only do they have to do it to keep from getting in trouble, now they're going to have to do an extra thing that I never would have sold to them in the first place. Now there's a punishment thing on top of it. Because I know he can't keep his goddamn mouth shut. So, um, so there's now, that. But Was that a, an NPC you made, or was that someone's No, character? that was a player. That was an actual player's character? That was a player's character. I just I knew the character that well that I knew what was going to happen. I knew what he'd do. And it made it easy to lay traps. On the other hand, you know, because you talk about how when people can derail shit. You know, Danny, I've known you a long time. Yes. Um, Joey, you weren't here at the time. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and, I, you know, I know Jessica very well, but Tom I didn't know so well. So Tom completely fucking caught me off guard. You know, I, I wasn't used to how he thought. I wasn't used to how he did business. You know, he had a way of looking outside the box, taking the box, and kicking it down the street. And then coming up with a new solution. I didn't see it coming, but what do you do? Um, you kind of shit your pants and you dive in. You know, you find a convenient way if you need to to get like a little bit of a break. Oh, I gotta go to the bathroom or a smoke break. And you take a couple minutes and you go, okay, well, what happens now? But part of that too is taking, uh, if, if you've built your world, world up enough, all right, you, you should be able to find a logical solution in the confines of the world you've created. You know, your, your NPCs should react a certain way. If you've built them up enough, you, you don't have to worry too much about how they would react. They'll inform you because you've done that job. You know, um, if, if someone's pulling a piano up, like in those old movies, you know, with the, they got the pulley system yeah. and they got on the rope and someone cuts that rope, well, you know the piano's going to fall. You don't need to take 20 minutes to go, shit, what do I do now? Well, gravity will take care of that. You know that will happen. So what's going to happen next? It's a danger, but that's part of being a storyteller. Is it's not enough just to have all your maps and your plans and your script written, but the ability to throw that out when Tom puts lightning in water. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, no, I'm, just, I'm over it. I'm just kidding. He knows that. <laughs> I haven't been mad about that in like two years. I was pissed on the day, though. No, I was pissed on the day, though. The day off, I'm sure. Because it was a hell of a story. And, uh, you know, 
trying not to go too much into our games, but just so people understand, Porter had an ending. And with Tom's decision to do what he did, completely threw that ending out the fucking window. Well, I'm going to be humble for a second. I'm going to say that ending was beautiful and it was poignant, and I made the mistake of starting with that ending when I wrote the damn chronicle. So that was Which my fault. kind of, I think, one of the reasons it ended the way it did. So, but that doesn't change the fact that Porter still had a good ending to the story. It might have, you know, had to be the quick thinking and, okay, this happens now instead of what I wanted to originally happen. But, you know, storyteller knows better than, you know, players do. I want that in writing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you would pull that out in every game. Yes, I would. I have a question. Okay. When you actually mentioned that starting with the ending was your mistake. It was, it was a mistake, yeah. Um, where do you start? Well, that's, that's fair. Um, and it's kind of the nature of the, the inspiration that hits you. Okay. Um, that answer changes. You know, um, I had a chronicle that I had prepped and done maybe a third, two-thirds of the work. Mm -hmm. And this this was for a Boston game that just fell through. Um, it, it, I was in Boston; the game was not. Okay. <laughs> and, and it just it just fell through. But uh, three quarters, and it was based on, uh, or at least the the, the, insp the inspiration from it was um, the, these pictures of this uh, closed down theme park. Okay. There's a place called Babalo Island. Some of you may have heard of it. Some of you may not have been born. <laughs> Most of you who are near Michigan have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. But, you know, Google the ruins of Babalo Island. It's pretty cool. You know, it's this, uh, in the short version here, it's an island theme park. It's closed down, so nature's kind of taking it back. And there's some really cool images there. Mm -hmm. And so I thought about that location and, and some neat things I could do and well, what if. And I love this idea of nature reclaiming this. Okay. You know, so at that point, what I did was I started kind of in the middle. You know, how would this factor into anything? I want to do this. I want to touch down on this island. Okay, cool. How do I get there? And where am I going with it? Gotcha. You know, so at that point you start in the middle and you kind of work both ways until you have something that makes sense and tracks. And having it make sense is, it's going to sound stupid to say out loud, but it's so important. You know, there, there have been many times when I've had a, a villain with an overall plot. You know, there's something going on here. Mm -hmm. And um, you write it down. And then you write it down from the perspective of the villain. And then you write it down from the perspective of the players who will eventually gain this knowledge over the course of a chronicle. And you have to read it back and read it back and go, does this make sense? You know, Joey, in fact, there was a point, um, and it was during these guys' I think first chronicle, third chronicle at some point. Okay. Uh, the Snowball's Chance. Okay. When they were accessing third, information. Probably, the, yeah, the third, yeah, because it was at the summer end. So they were um, able to, they had the, the potential to hack this computer and get these emails. You remember this? Yes. And the emails would eventually outlay this this story, mm -hmm. this larger plot. And so I, I had them. I had them as separate emails, and they were just bullet points of what the emails would say, I believe, right? Right. Or were they the full email? No, it was just the bullet points. Okay. And so Joey, you know, she wasn't playing at the time. Or she was you know, she wasn't here with us, so she was kind of my assistant storyteller. I'd bounce stuff off of her. And so I sent these to her. And I said, I'm not giving you any context. Just look at these and tell me if this paints a picture. Yep. Because of her with no context can paint a picture of it and get the story, then I feel comfortable giving it to my players. Yeah, I remember that. Danny looks confused. I'm, I'm trying to remember that story, but it's, it's coming back to me. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, that's that's what that is. It's the It has to make sense, and it has to make sense not just for the storyteller, but for everyone involved. No, it makes a lot of sense. You know, you're talking about villains and, and you know, NPCs. You know, one of our previous episodes, we talked about, you know, you having 147,000 different NPCs. You know, in in some of your stories, how do you determine who is in those stories as far as your NPCs and villains? Well, in terms of villains, that's something I plan out. You know, every now and then I have a couple characters that I, I either are recurring villains or I'd like to be recurring villains. Okay. You have a couple favorites? Yeah, I have a couple, you know old chestnuts that yeah, maybe I'll dust off and oh, let's, see, let's see how this group deals with this guy or, you know, I like this guy, I'd like him to live so he can come back and be a problem later. <laughs> or, you know... <laughs> or a problem forever. You know, well, no, because if you don't, you don't kill the guy, then what are you doing? Eventually you have to win. 
the same way that eventually the NPCs that you've created that you care for so much have to die or have to get wounded and maimed. There has to be change. There have to be risks. This is not a G.I. Joe battle. Exactly. You know, I mean, think about it. How Think about how your sept has changed since you guys got there. Yeah. You know, there, there has to be that change. There has to be the risk of characters dying. Um, what the hell it's was that? It's a drastic change, but it was a slow change overall in the length of time. Well, it needs to feel organic. Right. But, you know, how, how you decide, you know, the villains, yeah, that's something you plan out. Um, if it's a Monster of the Week thing that's uh, what seems like it would be fun, sure. But if you're doing something long form, you plan that shit out. Uh, in terms of the, you know, the friendly NPCs, really, it's who serves the particular, the correct function, and or how is my voice feeling today? <laughs> <laughs> Because some of those NPCs are tough on your voice. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are a little, a little, little tough, and it's like, ah, uh, you know, like I got a sore throat today. I can't. I don't feel like I can do the distinction between those two. So this one is on. Uh, this one's off. This one's not in the care today. <laughs> <laughs> Which has got to be difficult because you've said previously that Whiplash is one of your favorites, and he's probably has the probably the hoarsest voice. It's not hard to do though, ironically. Not lucky. Whipl you. Whiplash isn't hard to do. But, you know, other characters are. Dempsey can be difficult, you know. It, it, it's just the straight put on your vocal cords, you know. So that, that is sometimes, you know, you, there's the truth. Sometimes that's a factor, you know. <laughs> I just don't have it within me to do Dempsey today. So you know, would, you recommend, would you recommend, like, vocal exercises to other people? No, but it's probably a good idea. I can't recommend it because I've never done it. <laughs> I can't be like, you should totally do this thing that I have never once even considered doing. It's so important you do the thing that I will not do. But it's probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Don't smoke. Don't drink pop. Don't do all these bad things to your throat. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no one's talking to you, Danny. I know. <laughs> drink warm tea with honey and lemon. <laughs> I don't know who these people are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have any more questions? Uh, I mean, there was, Tom took a lot of mine. The ones I wrote down, Tom wrote down better. Uh -oh. So I was like, well, great. I'm not going to steal answers again. I already got enough shit for that last time. <laughs> okay, so is it time to go into our new segment? Uh, in a second. I, I okay. think, you know, if there's something I want to leave... Well, there's many things, and you know, this isn't the only storyteller centric episode we're gonna do. No. We're gonna talk about this a lot. I've been doing this far too long to like this is all I have to say about it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> but um, new storytellers in particular, um, don't be afraid to keep the scale small. You oh, know, yeah. we, we are inundated with media these days, and, and there's a contingent of it that's always the next big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at a show, for example, like Supernatural, which I feel like maybe people who play Werewolf have also watched Supernatural. <laughs> could, could possibly. It makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of similarities. Sure. But, you know, you get your first season and they're fighting a demon. One. Right. Yeah. One demon. And then they feel the need to keep raising that bar. Well, and to be fair, they're not alone in that. Well, and that's my point. But, you know, they start with a demon and then they're punching God in the mouth. Like, you don't have to. And there's a lot of shows that do it. You're absolutely right. You know, that just raise the bar and raise the bar and raise the bar and raise the bar. And there is not going to be a story that I'm going to write where you're kicking the worm in the rocks. That doesn't even make sense. Don't be afraid to keep the scale small. You don't have to take your brand new group of cubs and put them up against a hive of spirals. In fact, don't do that. There's plenty of time for that. Let them grow and build and let that be something they can manage. Because if you're taking even a pack of spirals and mowing them down like it's nothing, first of all, the spirals are not scary. Yeah. Second of all, now you need to have something bigger and badder to be a credible threat to them because we've established that spirals aren't a big deal. Mm-hmm. Take the slow burn. It's okay. You've got plenty of time. And there's plenty in this world that's scary. Plenty. Plenty. You know, you, you don't have to be in a rush and you don't have to top yourself. Not in terms of a, of a threat. And I think it's okay to have, like, a big bad and then have a, a smaller bad, like a vacation week. Sure. Or it's, it's bad, but it's a different type of bad. It's a different type of problem. Right. Maybe your next threat isn't something you can punch in the mouth, you know? Or <laughs> Maybe it's hacking emails. 
maybe it is. Maybe it's internal. Maybe it's an internal struggle. Maybe it's uh, maybe it is something else you can punch in the mouth. But it's a different type of thing you can punch in the mouth. It doesn't have to be the king of the thing, you know. <laughs> The king of the thing you, you know, can punch in the mouth? Right, the, the king of the thing you can punch in the mouth. And then you fight the god of the thing you can punch in the mouth, and then everything's silly and it doesn't make sense, and people get bored and walk away. So just keep keep it small, keep it slow, it's all right. Everything will be going. fine. Sorry, sorry, Danny? It keeps the story going. There you go. Yeah. And it makes it so we can play this game for a long time and not get bored. Damn right, and hopefully the spirals are still scary. Uh, your spirals, oh, spirals. <laughs> your spirals are extremely scary, and don't get us started on Nexus crawlers. <laughs> they haven't even fought one. <laughs> no, no, we run, we run. We got close, and that was scary enough. I mean, the floor is actually lava. Which didn't happen. They just know that that could happen. <laughs> and there you go. I didn't throw a Nexus crawler at them. I threw a Nexus crawler near enough to them that we could kind of sort of see it and that was too close for us right um but yeah we have a new segment that we brought up in the beginning um you know a little something for people who don't know anything and we're yeah. tentatively calling it the rookie five and it's a working title if you've got suggestions let us know yep and uh we promise whoever came up with that title will take it personally and will whine they will whine about well it. i mean okay. for, for your enjoyment but they'll totally whine they'll ham it up <laughs> it was my idea. You'll hear it. So, so if you want to make somebody cry and whine, send us your suggestions. We will enjoy the waterworks. Hey, spoiler alert! It wasn't Dan this time. <laughs> he might be lying. <laughs> oh, I won't cry. I don't like the title. I think that's a challenge. <laughs> Fair enough. No, I'm just kidding. I can't think of anything better than that. <laughs> But so, for this first edition of the Rookie Five, what the hell is World of the Apocalypse? That is a perfectly absurd question, <laughs> considering that we're... Yeah, we're six deep. We, we, what's yeah. this thing we're doing? And, and listeners have listened, so... What can I say? We recorded the first five in one session. And, and you know, they stumbled into the wrong podcast and kept coming back. Right. Which, hey, thanks for coming thank back. You. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you, all of you. <clears throat> and that's why we're doing this segment, for you guys who stumbled here got, and were like, I'll take another one, please. <laughs> they got lost in the woods. All right, so we're going we're gonna to do this little quick segments here, one every episode until you're caught up or we're tired of it or uh, we get a bunch of feedback telling us that they hate it and we have to stop. I don't think that's going to stop us, though. I don't think we're going to throw feedback yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Joke's on you, ain't get those emails. <laughs> So, what is Werewolf the Apocalypse? Well, Werewolf the Apocalypse is, obviously, it's a game. Um, it is a, a storyteller game. It's uh, very much like D&D in terms of function, but not in, or I guess in form, not in function. There you go. That makes more sense. Yeah. You know, you have your group of players who uh, take on various roles. They play a character, you know, and they mm -hmm. come together to accomplish goals that, as a storyteller, I set out for them. Yeah, and these, these characters are generally werewolves. Okay. Yes. And We're not going to get hinky on that. <laughs> <laughs> they're generally werewolves. Yes. And they're fighting and striving and coming together to work as a team to prevent the apocalypse. The end of the world as they know it. Yep. So, I mean, that's kind of the very short version. You, you play with dice. Yep. You know, you have a character sheet, and you have a very talented storyteller. Hopefully. Um, he might be a hack. <laughs> but you tell him he's talented anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to say anything on this one. What the fuck, Danny? Who is this lady? <laughs> no, no, not even going to... Stay well, under the radar, you. <laughs> <laughs> but in, and that was our first Rookie Five. <laughs> so... That wasn't too painful. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need some burn cream? <laughs> uh, yeah, nap. <laughs> but, um, all right. That about does it for our show today. Yep. For this show today. Um, as always, we want to thank you so much for tuning in. You know, please tell your friends. Please rate, you know, rate us and, and give us reviews and stuff so we know what we're doing good and what we're not doing good. 
You know, it, it helps other people see us as well, so we can share the love that way. Do not hesitate to email us, you know, um, rageofcrosspodcast at gmail.com. You know, we, we look, we check a lot, we respond. You know, when, when we can, we respond. Yeah. You know, mostly I respond. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you can also find us on Twitter, barely, <laughs> at Rage Across. It, it doesn't get used very often, but... We're, but you know what? If they come on to Twitter and engage us, it might get used more. It, it might. It might. Might. It might. Mostly, though, we're, we're all over the Facebook. Yes, we are all over the Facebook. You know, Rage Across the Internet podcast. We're, we're pretty active on there. Yep. Um, at least we try to. Um, you know, you, of course, you, you have found us, so you know how to listen to us. But when you're telling other people, and you really should tell other people, that they can hear us on, uh, on iTunes on Stitcher, on Spotify. You can get us at our website at uh, Rage Across the Internet at uh, Podbean. No. 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 I, don't have my, I don't have my paper in front of me. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about anymore. Joey, help. <laughs> it is <clears throat> It is rageacrosstheinternet.buzzsprout.com <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joey. I knew I should have handed that to you in the first place. <laughs> we got each other. Hell yeah. Um, but again, thank you guys for listening. We, we very much appreciate you. It means the world to us. You know, uh, make sure to be excellent to each other. Keep your claws sharp and your head on a swivel. That's right, Billy. I took that. That's mine now. See ya. Rage Across the Internet's music is It's Into the Fog by Darren Curtis, shared with a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 unported license. For details, check out the information under the podcast.